Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh. to be glorified you are worthy almighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord to be glorified Please be seated. Just for a few minutes and we'll be upstanding. Shabalaka tapa rato kasiere. Jebeke te kosada balado siya na malata. Shabrandos kalabriyatash. Jege te barako siya da balada ba. Second Chronicles seven verse fourteen. If my people the first three words they are my people so we are not talking of those who are not my people but if my people more so they are called by my name he said they shall humble themselves he didn't say they shall say i am sorry repentance is not brokenness brokenness is deeper than repentance he says and shall seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and i will not heal them i will heal their land their territory not just heal them but their territory the absence of a broken and contract spirit is for many of us the mystery behind not only the tragedies of our lives the continued patterns and the reign of darkness over families over territories over individuals that you are a christian is not enough brokenness is a state that god cannot deny what is brokenness brokenness is a state of complete surrender number one number two brokenness is a recognition of your imperfections and your inadequacies outside of the mercy and the help of god this is called brokenness a recognition of your inadequacies and your imperfections outside of the mercy and the help of god brokenness is a spiritual strategy that god designed to kill pride in the life of men brokenness is a system in the kingdom it's a strategy invented by the wisdom of god to kill pride in men let me tell you this pride is behind the many sufferings of people not sin pride pride nobody really suffers for being a sinner we suffer because of our pride our parents suffer because of pride it's not their shortcomings it is the refusal to acknowledge that every man is inadequate without god are we together is god speaking to us the power of genuine brokenness
It's a strategy that kills pride. It's a strategy that kills a sense of self-sufficiency. One of the greatest unbecoming of believers. That sense of self-sufficiency, I can do without God. I can do without him. I can live without him. Lord, when I have a challenge in my life, I will call your attention to help me. Are we together now? Yes. It doesn't mean that God is not involved, but you keep him until you feel it is, with, it is beyond your power. Then you say, Lord, can you quickly come and just help me and then go back? A broken and a contrite heart is a heart that is perpetually living in the revelation that outside of God, I am inadequate. Are we together? Psalm 34 verse 18. Please give it to us. Psalm 34 verse 18. Shakato bakasiya katavala daba. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Please read it. It's projected. One to read. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. He said, and save it such. There are certain people that qualify for his salvation. The Bible says people who are of a contrite heart. That's the reason why you can see some persons will come to church. Are we together? They, come, they don't have faith. Are we together? They are not even walking in holiness and righteousness as we know. But they come with a genuine sense of brokenness. And the whole service becomes about them. Something about the sincerity of their heart attracted God. Are we together? Notice the kinds of people that attracted Jesus in his ministry. He, he was hardly attracted by the scribes and the Pharisees. He would see the sinners and go to them. They caught the woman with the issue uh, with, with, with adultery. She didn't argue and said, no, 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 no. And Jesus came and helped her. Remember when he met the woman who had six husbands. Five and the sixth one was not her husband. Look at how Jesus took time to reach out to these people. Let me tell you, there is one attribute I know a man can possess that will attract God in a helpless way. It's a broken and a contrite heart. Are we together? Yes. That a man can cry unto God from a state of brokenness and say, Lord, if you do not help me, my family will not rise. We have broken all the laws of financial prosperity. We have broken, I'm not a tighter. We are not tighters. We are not givers. Lord, if you don't help us, we are finished. And you will watch the Lord treat them like he treats the lilies of the valley that do not sow, neither do they reap. Yet, because they are his creation, he will get up and reach out to them in mercy. Every time people were broken and contrite, God responded to them. In the book of Jonah, there was a strange prophet that God gave an instruction to go to Nineveh and warn them. You know why Jonah refused? He knew God. He knew they would repent. He was praying that their, their hardened heartedness would remain so God would punish them for him. And he ran away and God drew him back. He said, go back. And the Bible says when Jonah announced that the people broke themselves in fasting and ashes, even their animals fasted. These were not people who were believers. They were not even of the covenant. But they became broken. Every time people were broken, God no longer asked them where they came from. A broken and a contrite heart. The opposite of pride. He said a broken and a contrite heart he will not despise. Let me tell you this. When you walk with God, we teach these principles. Your results at a level in the spirit will no longer be based on the accuracy of your applying this principle but that you have come to a place where you have become the friend of god it is important to teach these principles but i submit to you a time will come in your work with god it's no longer about what you are doing you have won his heart in a way and manner that he has become vulnerable to you 
you will see things you did not pray for you will enter dimensions you did not fast for because you have maintained a state of genuine brokenness the prodigal son left packed his wealth and went to live a riotous life is that true the bible says one day he came to himself that's what must happen to many people in this day one of this fast he came to himself and said come how many hired servants does my father have while i sit down here and die with the pigs what is there to be ashamed of i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and against you and i am not worthy you gave me resources i squandered it in a riotous way the bible says while he was afar off as soon as the father saw him he ran to him notice the father never asked him so where were you all the while a broken and a contrite heart is a magnet for the help and the mercy of god a broken and a contrite heart this is a principle that not only works for god it works for men are we together as wicked as we are as men when you find a man that is broken towards you no matter how hard you are you become as soft as a tissue paper the reason why many of us have lost favor we have lost opportunities we are humans and it is true that at some point you made decisions that was not wise or whatever it is our parents you fought with your boss they fired you something happened but we we thought we were repentant but we were not broken you see brokenness has a spirit you can know a man can come and say sorry hey, jimmy please i want to work for you again sorry and you know that this is just this is just apology this is pride on rampage brokenness has a character it's an unashamed acknowledgement of your humanity and how much it can shred you into pieces except God helps you there are people who have gotten their jobs back not because they qualified they came with brokenness there are relationships that have been restored because the individuals could be broken enough are we together there are business connections that have come back because of brokenness listen to what i'm teaching you tonight it's a very deep mystery david was a man who understood brokenness thoroughly 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 isaiah 57 verse 15 quickly let's look at it isaiah 57 verse 15 for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity listen whose name is holy he says i dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to do what to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones there are people who are qualified for revival like a dry and thirsty land as a man of god you have come to your wit's end as a businessman you have come to your wit's end and you come to the lord and say lord i am broken i acknowledge that if you do not help me i cannot do anything and god shows up for you someone can be holding his stick of cigarette under a bridge and just sit down and say god i don't know if you are there but you need to help me it's not like i like my life i'm sitting this way please arise for me brothers and sisters no prayer and fasting no fill with the holy ghost for his spiritual eyes to be open there an angel is sent from heaven and it comes to that person there his brokenness is a magnet it drew the hand of god i have seen god visit families that broke every spiritual law i know learn the laws of the spirit your humanity will necessitate them learn them one of it is brokenness are we together yes david was a man who understood god god don't give me to my enemies punish me by yourself i choose your own way and god said this man this man 
how many young people have lost the favor of their loved ones because they do not have a heart of brokenness you used to live a wayward life i said now am i not get am i not getting well behaved is my father not seeing there's no brokenness genuine brokenness i have seen people who are genuinely broken i have seen i have advocated for people who have offended their destiny helpers and i saw the level and the extent of their brokenness i felt guilty leaving them that way i went out of my way to broker reconciliation this is me a man take over jehovah I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. So take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of myself. Jehovah, Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm sharing with you this is a very powerful revelation these are the kinds of people that all things work for their good they know what to do to God to change equations you will look at them it is true their family should be caused their father was a herbalist it's true he slew one of the sons it is true that an ordinance is speaking against them and he goes before God he says Lord I, I don't come in my own righteousness. I come before you. Oh God, I never lied that I was a herbalist. I never lied that I collect the charm. It was out of pressure I came before you. Who else will I run to? And God says, who is calling me? Who is call which family is calling me? And while repentance is going on, one devil is there concocting a charm. That man cannot pray in tongues. That man does not even know which scripture should be. He cried and God showed up and said, because of what you have done, I enter a covenant with your children's children that all of them will be the head. And you find out that three generations afterwards, all leaders, not because they fasted, their brokenness was a covenant. Are we together? show me a man that understands brokenness and I show you a man whose end you will never see you will never see I am convinced now and, and I, I don't say this in a state of sarcasm I say this sincerely I am convinced that when people fall to a point that their chapter closes the, a level of pride was responsible for that are we together mm. Peter saw Jesus Christ and because of the pressure he ran away and betrayed him it was not a lie when Jesus came to him in John 21 he said little children have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side when they caught fish Peter realized it was Jesus the same Jesus he had betrayed three days ago the Bible says he ran away he said go away from me I am a sinner this is not the issue of condemnation it's a recognition Jesus I did this to you and you still come to me I disappointed you I told everyone I did not know you I took advantage of your benevolence but I come to you and Jesus said, Simon, this attitude has earned you something. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. You qualify to be the leader. This is the kind of attitude that is leader worthy. An attitude that is unashamed before me. 
there are many proud people moving up and down i don't drink i don't smoke i don't look for women i don't look for men and our pride keeps us there every time we see people rolling before god and crying their hearts we sit down there with a sense of self-perfection full of our pride full of our jealousy full of our lust just because it has not yet manifested does not mean it's not there and when there is an opportunity to cry before god we sit down saying ah, ah you mean that lady is also praying wow thank god though koinonia is helping some people a broken and a contrite heart a heart that is unashamed before god a heart that can roll from end to end and say lord you are the helper you are the coverer you are the defender of my life the psalmist knew this he said i'm aware that many are they that trouble me many are they that look they pray for my downfall if you do not understand brokenness you will fall like a chicken it will surprise you your rising has a side effect to many people and they hope and pray daily that something happens in your life and if you understand brokenness you have held god in a way and manner that he will never leave you this i know about god a broken and a contrite believers are very proud people we exaggerate the teachings of faith we exaggerate the teachings of righteousness and it makes us proud people and we cannot tremble at his word and allow his spirit to walk on us that's why there is no power that's why there is no grace that's why there is no favor that's why there are no results a sense of self-sufficiency take over take over i have come to the end of myself take over take over i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. i have come to the end of myself brokenness is a mystery that attracts the mercy and the help of God to a man's life. A mystery that attracts the help and the mercy of God. When God is ready to show you mercy, do you know God can help men? How many of you believe that? Do you know God can help men? Ha! There are very few people that have seen the help of God. This is not men favoring you. This is God deciding that I want to help you. I have helped people in my life by the grace of God and I have seen how easy their lives became because I could reach out to them. God can turn to a man and say, me, Alpha Omega, I have decided to come to your family to help you. It will surprise you what will happen. Most of us do not know what the help of God can do. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help not my neighbor's own i don't know how he gets his own but my help you see us like this the name of this ministry is ebenezer a ministry that has been helped by god helped spiritually helped with grace some of these mysteries are not just a product of personal research some of them are sh a sheer help of god that god comes to you by himself and says i want to help you God can help men when God helps you something will change about your life there are many families that don't help have the help of God because our loved ones are there in their pride and arrogance I think we should go and see a man of God I know God too and God says you see you see it now a broken and a contrite heart let's go and cry to God ah, didn't I tell my wife sorry didn't I tell my husband sorry there's no brokenness genuineness some of us seated here this is the one limitation that makes satan to buffet our lives and yet god seems to stand helpless everybody said genuine brokenness genuine brokenness that a man can come to a point where he goes to god i remember a woman who shared her, her testimony very touching testimony 
she was staying in a house um, a, a, a rented apartment very wealthy man you know somewhere in abuja and true story she could not pay you know there was no way it's not the issue of give me time there's nowhere money is going to come from anywhere and the woman was broken because she still had the fees of her children this woman sent me a text by herself she said when she, it was very obvious that the boss was the the owner was going to drive her that the woman said she just knelt down before him and said you have children like this one and she was crying she said it's not my fault that my husband died i didn't kill him it's not my fault that I didn't have the opportunity to be educated. I'm not lazy. It's just condition that has kept me like this. If you drive me, where do I go to? This woman started crying. And according to what she told me, that the man just kept quiet and looked at her and was touched. He said, I have children and I have conscience. I will never do this. He said, continue to stay here. It's not your own. But just continue to say, forget about rent. Because of this thing you have done, I've given you this. The help. You know, many of us want to seek help at our own terms. Pride and help don't go together. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please, Emeka, I hear you're a doctor. Can you treat me? You are the one who is sick. Oh God, are you not seeing what is this family is doing? We need five million to solve our problems. I come by the blood of the Lamb as, as if you, you, you ask him to die. And in the name of Jesus Christ. Pride! That's what the Bible calls it. I watch people all around from pastors to leaders and in all honesty I see that price oozing out desperate for help but not broken enough to receive it there are people who are desperate for help but the brokenness that qualifies them to receive <clears throat> their knees will not go to the ground I don't mean physically their knees will not go to they want to be helped but they want to be helped at their own terms. Sorry, do you have 100 naira? Can you help me? It's not by force. If you don't have, that's alright. That's a proud man. He's hungry. He's in need. And he's ashamed. It's not my culture to beg. I'm, I'm just, it's, I just felt like. And it's not usually what I do. I just hope that you can help me. Pride. Those kinds of people never get the attention of God. Thou son of David. Thou son of David. Please. Thou, you are the son of David others call you Jesus but I I know what they've been saying about you have mercy I don't know what what it takes to stand up from here and I'm not sure I even have it look at the father of that guy that was convulsing he said help my own belief I don't understand this your faith thing I've done all I know to be faith please if I'm not getting it right, if you leave me here to learn faith, this child can die before I finish learning it. Help my unbelief. And God turned. Who is this? Notice how God was helplessly drawn to people who were broken. Is God speaking to us? Lord, I need your grace and I need your anointing. I'm not, I'm not coming to act as if we are colleagues. Lord, I'm standing. If you give me anointing, fine. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not ashamed. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour, I need thee, come bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee, I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour. I need thee, come bless me now, my Savior. I come. Listen, when you truly need help, don't act like you can do without it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Brokenness is a force, it can draw help to you. There are many destiny helpers around us, but our pride is what stops us from receiving help it doesn't take god anything to change a man's life overnight is this attitude of pride oh promise i hear that um you are an anointed man can you just agree with me i have issues in my life uh, but if you are not if you are free that's all right you expect that anointing to work 
I'm not talking of human worship. It's the same way we approach God. We approach God with our pride and our sense of being. This is not condemnation. This is a recognition. If you hear the way I pray for koinonia, it will scare you. You will think I killed a human being. Lord, it is by your mercy that you draw people. This afternoon, I just laid down on my bed flat and I said, Lord, it is by your mercy you change people. It is your voice that is able to change people. You are the only one who will draw people. I don't take for granted what you are doing. I will never act like I don't need you. And here he comes again, a broken and a contrite heart. What prophecy did you cancel through pride? What prophecy stopped working in your life? Because there was no genuine brokenness. This kingdom thrives on mysteries. I'm unveiling one of them for you. So that you will see. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. You want a new heart? You want to rise in the spirit? It takes brokenness. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. We are, we are going to pray shortly. Very quickly. It says a new heart also I will give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart. This is, this is the heart of many of us here. A stony and stubborn heart. It says, and I will give you a heart of flesh. That's the Bible. Let me show you one more scripture. Very powerful scripture I found. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. Very solid scripture. Listen. It says, and I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. I will give you a heart that will make you know me. It says, and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Why? For they shall return to me with their whole heart. It shall return to me with their whole heart. A broken and a contrite heart towards God and towards men. There are nations that would never go for war if their leaders can just admit we were careless, we compromised on the deal. I'm sorry. But millions go hungry and in war because of the pride of one person. Over my dead body, you hear them say, many of the yokes that are on our families came because of the pride of one person. One person. One person, one arrogant person. No. Over my dead body. And the Havali said to me, say yes. And we grew up in all kinds of yokes of darkness. How many people offended a very old woman, pushed her down, and she said, my daughter, what did I do? Leave me alone. Is it that you don't have eyes to see? And the woman looks. You say, you did this to me? Your children will do it to you. And the foolish girl moves around thinking that it's all about catwalking. And many years later, her innocent daughters come. Beautiful, wonderful people. When a man comes, as soon as he says, I love you, what will happen to him? He will leave you by himself. That's why God put this. If my people who are called by my name they are called by my name, but the devil is still beating them left, right, and center. He never said, I don't have the power to save. Are we together? He said, but they shall humble themselves and then pray and then seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Under that condition, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their lands. Go and watch the documentary about Fiji Island. The revival in Fiji Island. That's what happened. Many years ago, missionaries came to Fiji Island. And then the people slaughtered the missionaries and killed them. And the missionaries, when they slaughtered them, everything died in that land. The fishes disappeared mysteriously from the sea. It's a documentary you can go and watch. Everything went down. They will plant crops. Locusts will come from nowhere and devour it. And then one time, 
a group of Christians who had been exposed said look this thing is not just the issue of we are Christians there has to be a way of making peace are we together in the New Testament restitution is not necessarily just about going back to go and say oh I stole five naira when I was five years but restitution is a state in the heart a genuine state this our pride in the body of Christ is why we don't see the power of God we just jump at anything just because of a little theological study we did here and there and do you know the people in the land came together intercessors began to pray a few weeks turned to months and one time in the midst of that prayer the spirit of prophecy came and he said look you people have to pray this land has taken the blood of those who were bearers of good news and they sat down they prayed and they cried before God they said Lord you have to help us and fortunately for them they were able to get in touch with the grandchildren of the ministers they slaughtered and the Christian missionary said it's true we have repented but since these people are there can't we reach out to them and they wrote a letter to them and the young people say we are not coming you people slaughtered our grandparents we had the story you didn't even allow us to see their body they removed their head and danced around with them in shrines and eventually the Christian organizations called the people and they came and do you know they had it was like a ceremony they made peace they hugged them and the little children said no 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 our parents have died but their blood flows to us and you are repentant we bless you the people who did this thing have long died you shouldn't be the victims of this we bless you it was not up to one week they started seeing fishes mysteriously in the sea the water the vegetation go and read it fiji island the the like the president of fiji island officially dedicated the place to god mysteries that people do not know and we cheat ourselves here and there a broken heart show me somebody who has offended god to whatever and can run to god and say lord i come to you show me a man who has offended a human being and can run to the person genuinely remember jesus taught about this in the parable of the servants unjust servants one of them went and cried master forgive me and all of that and all of that and they forgave him and then he did not go to make peace with the other one and then they now dealt with him that story was a message that you can run to him and you can cry and he will hear you if my people if koinonia a ministry called by my name shall humble themselves most of us every time we hear this thing we just think it's just for sinners it's for bad people may god knows i've tried that thing is pride is pride when it's time to be broken before god you are broken genuinely lord it is by your mercy it is by your grace i need your help in my life men are getting more wicked i need your help I counseled a dear woman I'm sure she may be here and when I counseled her I saw the kind of trouble she you know as I counsel people my heart reaches to them I've been doing this for years there are cases when you hear you know that only God no matter how well meaning you are you can't help that situation the only and and the way they come to you man of God help me and you too you know that you can't help. it takes it takes only one who sits on God's throne to be able to help do you believe God can help you my life is a testimony of a man that God has helped God can help men it's a language we don't know most of our loved ones don't know it they believe men can help but they don't believe God can help the key is brokenness some of those who have received the mercy of God most are some of the most disobedient people. That's what pains some of us. Because you are roommates with them. 
and you see the way God keeps going out the moment they are broke oh Lord an alert comes and you are there you come back from three days dry say father I'm still here say you, you will continue being there and you watch you there's no brokenness in your heart somebody comes and says Lord help me you know my situation There are people who God changed their exam scores because of brokenness. They went to God and said, Lord, please help me. I take responsibility I didn't read. It is obvious that if this result comes out, I have two years. And they rolled before God and cried. I'm not talking of the mystery of a dance. This is not dancing. It's not every time you dance. There are times you lie down and cry. And God comes to them. And all of a sudden, the course comes out and you see A. Something they didn't finish answering question one. Out of five questions. Who taught us that God has stopped helping men? He said Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. Marvelously. God can help a man of God. And in one month, your life and ministry will change. God can help a family. Some of these things we are struggling with, it takes God to help us. You attract his help. One of the things that I believe, believers, and I say this from the strength of counseling, there are two spirits that believers must cry that God should help. I know we are humans and I don't mean to condemn you. Masturbation. And pornography two devils of darkness that the devil uses to tear people into pieces it starts from their dreams when something good is about to happen a breakthrough is about to happen there the spirit comes again and you find out that the favor goes then the urge leaves too I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours Lord I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours sing one more time Lord I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours There are women who the secret to the baby you are looking for is brokenness i've met every man of god they pray for me I've, uh, uh, brokenness carry your medical report you have five brought here you have five brought here you put it on the ground and let your tears do the praying oh god will you not help me oh god my father served you till he died he died as a missionary for the sake of your mercy remember mercy and you are crying and you fall asleep and here comes an angel sent from heaven and he comes to you just touches your stomach and you get up and go to the hospital doctor check me again and they say it's a joke where did you go to the helper the helper showed up in your house koinonia our families need help if we don't humble ourselves, recession will punish us to our knees. We need help. There are families that need to come together and just get down on their knees. From the greatest to the least. To say, Lord, I am the priest in this home. But I'm officially lifting this family. We need your help. We are broken. We are broken. See, the Bible says even a thief when he's caught... If the thief tells you, I only stole because I was hungry, he says, pity him. Bible, it, this is the Holy God speaking. That's why God will look at a prostitute somewhere and we say, God condemn her. And God looks in the midst of her prostitution. What he's seeing is, Lord, I need help. I've been doing this thing for 10 years, but I need help. And God suddenly sends a very powerful man of God he said that's your wife and you are there saying God this is cheating I've been in church God said well 
I promote who I can promote and demote any proud person I can demote. This is the reason why we are angry at some people's results because it looks like it's not fair. God should not help them with the way their lives are. But God, when your heart is right before God, God will surprise you. I am a keeper of principles, but I can tell you this. I have been committed to stand up and help people no matter how stupid they are because of something about their brokenness. When you see me pray for koinonia and pray for my own life, it, it will irritate you if you are praying with me. I don't cry before men, but don't be deceived. I cry before God with my life. I lie down before him and I say, Lord, help me. Help me. Are you getting blessed? We are going to pray. This is what we must engage tonight. Many of us need to cry on behalf of our proud family members. Ten ladies, no marriage. Go to the house of God. God forbid all that place in that church that they gossip about people. God wants to I won't come there. I'm, I'm too, no, no, no. I won't do that. You can stand on their behalf and say, Lord, if you depend on my family's faithfulness, you will never bless us. Lord, I'm advocating Lord, my father is a proud man, but I cry for the sake of Jesus, for the sake of what the Lord has done on the cross. Please step in for my family. Sickness is eating everyone. Lord, we have broken every rule, every law. I now know it is true that my father has 10 girlfriends somewhere. But Lord, if you use him to punish us, Moses knew what to do for Israel. God was angry. He said, these guys are in idolatry. I will cause them. Moses said, God, calm down. Abba, are you not merciful and compassionate? Do you want them to say you brought these people out and could not take them to the promised land? And God repented. Whatever you answer me, I surrender. This is the condition to see the mercy and the grace of God. Whatever you ask me, whatever you ask me, I surrender. I surrender. That's my commitment. That nothing becomes too much to release to you. prophesy it as a song we are going to pray shortly whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me I surrender I surrender whatever you ask of me whatever you ask of me I surrender more time whatever you ask of me Lord whatever you ask of me I surrender hmm. whatever you ask of me I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever it's yours Before you start claiming right, tonight is a night of thorough brokenness before God. I'm going to give you the next five to ten minutes alone before we start praying corporately. Whether it's on your chair, just I'm going to leave you alone with God. Everybody, find a way alone with God. Break your pride, whether you are inside or outside. This is 
you are alone with God and say Lord mercy 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 for my family mercy for my finances for my spiritual life Lord do not judge my family according to their iniquities for they are many Lord do not judge my sisters according to their wrongs do not judge my brothers Lord if you do not show my mother mercy there is no salvation if you do not show my father mercy Lord save my territory they are an idol worshipping territory they still worship idols have mercy I come to you with a broken heart Lord there are charms in my house right now I come to you with a broken heart pray pray I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours Forever, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours. Then I am yours. Then I am yours. Then I am yours. I'm yours. Lord, if you depend on my attitude, I will never get married. Lord, if you depend on my prayer life then I will never see your hand Lord if you depend on my faith level I will never break through in the spirit but tonight I cry I come to you with genuine brokenness forever 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 Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Lord, if you leave me to my results, I will never graduate. Lord, if you leave me to my jam score, I may never get admission. Where is the helper of my destiny? Arise for me. I cry before you. Oh God of Jeshurun. Arise and take away the shame of my family. There are times in this kingdom I admit to you where it is not the quality of your keeping the mysteries of the kingdom but your ability to invoke the help of God through brokenness there are businesses that the people don't know anything about finance they cried before God and God arose and said I choose to wipe your tears There are families who based on the way they train their children all the children should be arm robbers and prostitutes but not one of them is a spoiled child because somewhere along the line the parents had to hold their hands together and say lord help us help us this cry can give you a job i tell you this cry can give you a husband based on the way you are no good man should come to you it's not a lie but the mercy the mercy of God 
Just a few more minutes of genuine brokenness. Whatever you ask me, say, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. If you are not seriously praying, you are a non believer. If you are not praying in this atmosphere genuinely, then I'm telling you something is wrong with your passion for God. Lord, let the desires of my enemies not come upon me. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. There are many who lie in wait, waiting for your family to fail, to prove, but that God by his mercy can fit and help you. I surrender. Oh God. Oh, oh, oh. As we call on your name. Oh, oh, oh God. Pour out your mercy. As we pray. for his help oh, oh, oh God as we call on your name oh, oh, oh God as pour out your mercy Lord as we pray as we pray as we pray, sing as, as we, we pray. pray, as we pray. Keep talking to the Lord, He's coming through for you. As we my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only hope. I'm seeking you as a precious jewel. Not to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my only hope. One more time. You are my strength. You are my strength. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my only Lord. Passionate, slow to anger and rich in love my Bible says his mercies are new every morning just one more minute and we'll pray corporately and we're done
the Lord held the hands of Cyrus an unbeliever and prospered him because of the pride of God's own people he gave them over to their enemies it is not the witchcraft in your family that is killing you it is the lack of brokenness that is authorizing the spells to keep working there is a way your repentance can be so genuine the Lord will arise for you by his mercy my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by your deliverer is coming your deliverer is standing by prophesy to yourself two more times my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by one more time sing my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by now in the next 10 minutes i want you to arise like one who has touched the heart of god we are going to engage in some 15 minutes of intense warfare we are going to pound the gates of hell with faith we are going to pray and say that accuser of my family I have, bro I have been broken before God on behalf of my family he will not lift a railing accusation against my father against my mother I come with the spirit of faith lift your voice and begin to blast in tongues the Bible says even the lawful captive even the lawful captive shekatabakata in <laughs> Who are down mountain? Shakata ta 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 ta. Shakata pa ka ta ta ta. Reke te ke te ke te ke te. E reke to so to reke te. Mata pa ka to so reke te. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Ma pa to so se ke te reke Come on, pray. Silence the accuser. Silence the altars. Silence the voices. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it in the name of Jesus. I declare that every legal access for accusation, for oppression over my life, over my family, by the mystery of brokenness, I command it broken now. Lift your voice and pray. I silence the accuser over my family. I silence the accuser over Koinonia. The altar that accuses. The covenants that accuse. Let's 
Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that everything associated with my lineage, my family line that the devil is using against me by the blood, I silence you. Hold the hands of your neighbor and pray. pray. I silence you. I silence you. Ordinances. Handwriting. Ordinances. Handwriting. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are my helper. Say it again. Oh God, you are my helper. I have no other. I call on to you. Show up in my life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Show up. Show up oh God. by your mercy. Show up for me. Show up for me. Show up for my finances. Show up for my spiritual life. You are my helper. You are my helper. You are my helper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One or two last prayer points. And we finish. The Lord has declared that it's a year of signs and wonders. I told you a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it. You are going to say, Lord, turn me. Pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I offer my life. Turn it into a sign and a wonder lift your voice and pray turn my life turn my life into a miracle with a message on it turn it into a miracle with a message on it turn it into a miracle with a message on it Turn my life to a fearful sign of wonder. Turn my life to a sign of wonder. Pata, Patico Poto, Epre de Peke, Poto Porotus, Peru Sabane, Paru Sabane, Agaru Pata, Epre de Kene, Eru Sarato, Agapute, Prantopo, Carata, Ilatea. Hallelujah. The last prayer, and then we'll share the grace. Hallelujah. You notice we didn't take testimonies today, we'll do it tomorrow. So when you come, I expect lots of testimonies. We'll do it tomorrow. But we're just starting today. We'll just take this prayer point and then we're done. Tomorrow we can welcome Shut new people and all of that. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Everything I have lost in the years past, I decree and declare by the power of brokenness, return back to my life. 
open your mouth and pray. Yeah. Everything. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. I call back friends. I call back opportunities. I call back graces. I call back mantles. I call back access. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. We're still standing. I want you to maximize these times of prayer. Don't only pray when we come together. Are we together? The fire that is burning in this place will be burning for seven days. You can use the time. The sun is hot, but you can look for somewhere. Sit down and pray. I expect this revelation I've shared now. It should last you till evening tomorrow. So you go back and pray. It. Wake up in the night and pray it and curse that devil. When you hear the accuser declare brokenness, call your parents and tell them help is on the way. Help is on the way. I know you are traditionalists, but help is on the way. Call them. Don't say I'm afraid it will not happen. We are talking about God here. Call them. The help is on the way. I prayed for you and God is coming. Hallelujah. Please be here on time. And when you come, don't come alone. This is not, you can see that there are people everywhere. But you have prayed tonight and you know there are some people who should be praying this prayer. Drag them and plead with them. They're, this is not a koinonia thing. This is God visiting a land. Bring them. This magical manifestation that people want will not work that way. You come and engage mysteries and God will bless you. We are fasting. Please fast. These children are not too small to join us. If they do 6 to 10, it's alright. If they do 6 to 12, it's okay. Are we together now? Take out time and pray. And fast. By Monday, I will give us the keys to the other days and what we are going to be doing. But take out time to pray. Yesterday's message has been uploaded. Get it and listen to it. You can wake up in the night. Just play this song. Find a song. Don't snore your way till morning. Even if it's 15 minutes in the night. Maximize the night time. Get up and sit on the ground and just lie down and begin to reminisce on his faithfulness and begin to prophesy. You have to engage this thing to work. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. This is day one already. It won't reach day seven before you see the outstretched arm of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you already from tonight, this was your key for this prayer. That you have gotten this key, you will command signs and wonders again and again in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who is sick here in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. I stretch my hands as an extension of the hands of Jesus and I rebuke every infirmity in your body. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Please greet someone.